Let's take a look at factoring polynomials. Factoring polynomials could really be thought of as the reverse distributive property. And to see how that's the case, let's first review the distributive property. This problem right here, we have 5 times the quantity 2y minus 3. To get rid of those parentheses, we're going to distribute the 5 through. So we're going to multiply 5 times 2y and 5 times minus 3. So 5 times 2y would give us 10y. And then 5 times minus 3 would give us 15, minus 15. So now, if we're getting to factoring, with factoring, what we want to do is we want to take out, find the largest thing we can divide each term in our polynomial by. So in this one, I can divide both of these by 5. So what I do is I pull out the 5 in the front, and then what's left is going to be in parentheses. And if I take 10y and divide it by 5, I get 2y. And if I take minus 15, divide it by 5, I get minus 3. So we end up in the same place. So factoring is very much just the reverse of the distributive property. So let's take a look at an example here. We have 8m minus 20. What's the biggest thing I can divide 8m and minus 20 by? Well, let's try it. Here's a tip. Start with the smaller of the two numbers and work with factors of that number. So let's start with 2. Well, I can divide both of them by 2 because they're even. What other factors of 8 do we have? 4. Can I divide both by 4? Sure can. How about 8? Can I divide both of them by 8? No. So 4 is the largest thing I can divide 8m and minus 20 by. So I'm going to take that 4 and pull it out front. So we have 4 times the quantity 8m divided by 4 gives us 2m. Then minus 20 divided by 4 gives us minus 5. Now if we wanted to check, we could distribute the 4 back through, and it would turn out that we would end up right back here with the 8m minus 20. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have 2n squared plus 6n. What's the biggest thing we can divide both of those by? Look at the smaller of the two and work with factors of that. So 2, well, I can divide both of them by 2 for sure. But we've also got this n stuff going on. n squared is really n times n. So there's two n's being multiplied. And then we've got just one n over here. So we can divide both of them by a single n as well as the 2. So what we're going to do is take out 2n. So we take 2n squared and divide it by 2n. What do we have left? Just n. Then plus 6n divided by 2n gives us 3. Now again, we can check our work. Distribute the 2n back through. 2n times n gives us. 2n squared, and 2n times 3 gives us 6n. Let's take a look at another one up here. 12t to the third plus 5t. Biggest thing I can pull out, well, 5, factors of 5 are just 1 and 5. I can't take a 5 out of 12, so there's no number I can pull out. But we've got t's. There's three t's here being multiplied, t times t times t. And then we have just a single t here, so they have a t in common. So we'll pull out a t out front. Then 12t to the third divided by t gives us 12t squared. Then 5t divided by t gives us just 5. So again, check your work. t, multiply it back through. t times 12t squared gives us 12t to the third t times 5 gives us 5t. Same thing applies if we're dealing with more than two terms. So here we have a trinomial, three terms, and we want to look through and see what the biggest thing we can divide everything by is. Well, smallest number is 12, so let's look at factors of 12. Um, 3, can we, 2, well we've got 2, they're all even, so we can divide them all by 2. Let's go for bigger. 3, we can divide 12 by 3. 20 and 32 aren't divisible by 3, so we can't do that. 4, 
12 is divisible by 4, 20 is divisible by 4, 32 is divisible by 4. How about 6? Nope, can't divide them all by 6, just 12. Um, 12, nope, they're not divisible by 12, so we're going to have to divide them all by 4. What about the x stuff? We've got three x's here, two x's here, and one x there, so we can take an x out of all of them as well. So we're going to take out 4x out front, then just go ahead and divide each thing by 4x. So 12x to the third divided by 4x would be 3x squared plus 20x squared divided by 4x gives us 5x. And then 32x divided by 4x gives us 8. Again, if you don't believe me, multiply it back through and we would end up back here. That's factoring polynomials. Again, remember, it's basically the opposite of the distributive property. And you can always check your answers by distributing that number that you pull out back through. A key thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that we want to divide by the biggest thing possible so that there's nothing we can divide these numbers that are left inside the parentheses by and pull out again. Then it wouldn't be completely factored. We want to make sure there's nothing, the greatest common factor, of the pieces of the polynomial is one, okay? Because if we want to use some uh, some terminology, we're looking for the greatest common factor, and then we pull that out. In other words, the biggest thing we can divide all the terms of the polynomial by. We take that out front, and we get the factored polynomial.